Well, welcome back, everybody. This is uh, actually an unplanned video. Uh, we had some questions there about the coal current ramps and how much current and time between them. And and this is uh, Dave. This will be for you, where his channel is spelunkered, and also to Steve Rob. All right, Dave, I'm going to take care of you first. Hopefully this answers your, your questions here. Uh, one thing before we get going here is I want to mention that uh, on the primary coal, when the current is going through there and when the field collapses, I mentioned that the magnetic lines of force gets cut across over to the secondary winding. Okay, and then we have a high voltage. But also this here, this here magnetic lines of force in the primary winding collapses also into itself and we can actually get voltages on the primary side that can go up, say from 14 volts, they can go up to 400 volts. So I just want y'all guys to keep that in mind too if you ever want to look at the uh, primary voltage. Now this particular one right here, uh, we're looking at the red trace. This here is the uh, coil that's going through all three of the ignition coils here. Okay, and the way I've got this now, if you if you know anything about the GM waste spark ignition for the coils, they're mounted on top of the ignition module. Now there's two pins, there's two wires, uh, connections that's on the primary side, but you can't get access to them. You can't measure the voltage, you can't measure the current directly. So what we're seeing here is the uh, current through the primary, but it's actually taken off of the uh, B plus uh, voltage that's being powered up to the, uh, that's powering up the ignition module. So that's where the amp clamp is uh, connected at, just in case you're wondering. Okay, let's take a look at one of these uh, current ramps. Well, maybe we'll get two in there. Okay, this uh, right here, everything is off, coal is off. And right here, with the coal is being told to turn on. Okay, so now we have primary current starting to rise. Yeah, you see a little bit of oscillations in there. These oscillations are the interaction of the magnetic fields between the primary and secondary windings when the cur cur current first starts to go. All right, so it's starting, and as you see, we have a ramp pattern here starting up there. All right, this here ramp is coming from the uh, inductive uh, reactants of the coal, which is a property of an inductor where it tries to oppose any change in current. So that's why you don't see the line just shoot straight up. If you did, then you got a shorted, usually a shorted uh, primary winding. Okay, so we reach this max up here, and now we, the coil is just turned on fully, and there goes the current, flat top right across. Let's get, uh, let's get a measurement on that. So we can pull it down, and if you look right there, it looks like it's 9.4 amps. I believe I told you 9.5, so I was just looking at another one. You can see that one over here to the right, just a little bit higher. Okay, now let's see, and this, uh, this period that it's on across the top there, flat top they call that the dwell period that's the time that the coal is actually on um, you also you we can measure that we can see where it turned on which is right there now let's see how long it takes for this whole event to take place okay now it starts up goes across and now you see this vertical line just comes right straight down this is where the transistor turns off and you notice how fast this transistor turned off. I mean, it is fast, okay? In fact, the faster this comes down, the better. That is, uh, relates back to Lenz's law where the faster the magnet uh, switch is turned off, the primary current, when it drops the faster, the more high voltage you'll get out. Of course, also related to the amount of current and also to the number of turns and that kind of stuff too. So that's a very important thing. You want that there vertical line you know you want it to be vertical where it turns off so this whole event takes uh takes about seven milliseconds that's pretty fast and by the way this is where the high voltage is made was when this here drops so when the current collapses this current goes down to zero and that's where our high voltage is made okay another thing dave is i think he was asking about the polarity on the plugs uh, if i understand it seems like uh one side is negative and then when it alternates they, it, it'll go back positive like the ones on the compression well the three plugs like this being a V6 uh, that polarity will stay fixed so three three of the plugs are allocated to the negative polarity the other three they're allocated to the positive polarity and that does not <clears throat> it does not alternate so it's fixed 
okay uh, let's see now let's look at the timing events on this so we know we have to have six firing of the plugs that means there's going to be two complete turns of the crankshaft all right so let's get in there let me get a little zoom in on that let's see one two three four five six that uh, should be good right there okay now I'm going to start the event here's where we're starting now we're going to mark off two turns of the crank so there's one event two event three four five six and right there we'll complete the second turn of the crank and we have all six of our firing events in there one two three four five six okay now let's get these here markers out which will measure uh, and by the way if we look up there uh, two turns of the crank will take uh, about 142 milliseconds all right so now let's take and put our zero marker zero degree marker down here and let's get our 720 degree marker that represents two turns of the crank okay he looks pretty good right there and let's take this marker and now let's put him and line him up for the starting of the next event okay all right he looks pretty good now if you take a look up here Dave you can see that it's 120 degrees so that's 120 degrees of the turn of the crank and then the next event fires okay let me lock the cursors here and let's take these here and just slide them on down let's see how they look so there we go they line up 120 degrees 120 degrees there's 120 degrees 120 degrees and 120 degrees okay all right so hopefully Dave that uh that answer your question there a little bit on that one okay now Steve let's uh let's go for you let's open up a waveform here and this here is going to be the high voltage ignition just looking at it okay all right Dave here's your question I mean I'm sorry Steve here's your question for you uh, can you tell me which one of these cylinders they have a companion cylinders looking to it one time can you tell me which one is on the compression stroke that is correct that will be this one up here on the top and you can tell that because of the high voltage it, it took to jump that gap right there okay so basically what's happened here is here, all of this here, to the left is where the coal is being turned on the primary currents building now this is all voltage this is a voltage representation of that and then the current is just sitting there just waiting waiting the coal is on waiting and now it's turned off the primary currents turned off and here comes a high voltage true so it took let's see how much voltage it took to jump that gap it took about 5.6 kilovolts 5.6 thousand volts now once it jumped that gap it doesn't need that much voltage to continue jumping the gap so once it jumps the gap it says okay I don't need that much now so what it does is it comes down to right there so if you look right there that's where the spark continues and it's and it's arcing 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 and as you can see that the voltage is rising so it's uh, maybe got a little bit of a lean condition coming in here as a you know lean condition will create a high resistance and then that of course give you a higher voltage and then the spark went out at this point right up here at the top and let me point that out to you right 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 in here and now you can see the spark is gone okay and then what happened is there's still some uh, coal energy left and it's, in other words it's still got spark it's ready to do some more but because the spark went out it dissipates that energy and it does that through these oscillations here until it finally just you know all of the energy out of the coil is going in this part here now we can also look at this here spark line I'm down here I'm gonna line up uh, let's see how long the spark line that's an important thing for analysis too okay right there is where the spark went out I'll see about right there and if we I'm looking on the waste event right now so if you look right here we are about one millisecond so that whole spark lasted about one thousandth of a second and it's all over so it is very very fast okay as far as the spark duration okay I hope that I answer your question there Steve uh, 
Dave, and of course to other people out there watching, if you got any other questions and no, all, just holler out and uh, we'll try to answer them for you. You guys take care.